welcome to my sewing room. We have such an exciting show for you today. It's called Cut Work. Now some of you might be thinking, well Martha, I'm just scared to death to try cut work. Well, I will tell you, that's exactly the reason we're going to do this show. To unravel your fears and to show you how easy it can be to do the beautiful machine cut work. The first color I have to show you, it just has worlds of wonderful machine cut work and pretty Richelieu bars, flowers, and little eyelets. Those we're going to show you how to do a little bit later on. Cut work is my very favorite on both Batiste and on linen. This sweet little girl's pinafore has an absolutely precious little cut work butterfly with all of its satin stitch on the outside and the Richelieu bars making the wings for the butterfly. Another beautiful child's dress made out of handkerchief linen has a collar. It's, the dress is done in peach and the cut work is done in peach also. Pretty peach flowers going all the way around the collar, all done on a beautiful linen. What a pretty, pretty color. This is the cut work done on a lady's linen blouse and this really beautiful uh, turquoise. Can you see all the beautiful flowers? And actually this cut work is a little bit different because it is backed by a netting. This color handkerchief linen is so beautiful. It's a, uh, a lavender blue, absolutely one of the prettiest colors I've ever seen. The cut work on this particular blouse has almost has a shield, then it has a tulip in the middle, and then more of the Richelieu bars. Very, very pretty, and those little secrets of those little bars are going to be unraveled in just a few minutes. The last one we have is in a beautiful marine blue, a scoop neck blouse with tulips and, and almost looks like flowers and shapes, Richelieu bars, all of the wonderful tricks of cut work. Now, I'm ready to go over to the technique boards just to show you how easy it is to do beautiful cut work. And with this explanation and this show and just a little bit of practice, I believe you'll be ready to do beautiful cut work also. May I start with you at the very beginning on the cut work? First of all, I have the handkerchief linen in a hoop and there are two layers of water soluble stabilizer also in this hoop. That's my beginning. Now, to do the design, I'm going to show you how to do the Richelieu bars. You know those pretty little bars that went across the openings? All right, first of all, I do a straight stitch all around the design. Next, I go back and right on top of the straight stitching, I do a zigzag right on top, all around of the straight stitching. So I've done a straight stitch and then a zigzag. The next step is to come in and cut away the fabric only. Do not cut away the water soluble stabilizer. It is still behind there. Cut away the fabric only. The next step, I go across, straight stitch across, and then literally jump my thread over. I don't stitch on the water soluble stabilizer. Just take it and walk it over, take a little stitch, walk it back. Now let me show you. That's the third, the fourth step. Now then this particular illustration shows that you walk it over once, you walk it over again. You take a stitch. You walk the thread over again, take a stitch. Two or three times you walk it back and forth. In other words, to put some bars over. Next, I come back and simply do a satin stitch over those walked bars I've just made. I satin stitch a one time down. You don't go backwards and forwards, just simply start at the top and satin stitch one time down over the walked bars and that makes the Richelieu bars. This particular hoop illustrates bar, Richelieu bar, Richelieu bar, Richelieu bar, Richelieu bar. In other words, you do that same process over uh, on each one of these Richelieu bars. After finishing the Richelieu bars, then the last step is to simply satin stitch all the way around the design and therefore it is finished. Now that is the basic steps of the Richelieu bars and the cut work. I'd like for us to go over to the sewing machine now and I've invited my dear friend Louise Baird to demonstrate for you at the sewing machine exactly how it is, how easy it is to do cut work. Welcome to the show, Louise. Thanks, Martha. I'm glad to be here. 
Um, just like you said, I thought when I first began uh, cut work that it was really difficult, but the difficult part was I learned how to do it with the free motion, meaning no foot and feed dogs down. But once someone showed me how to do it with the feed dogs up and the foot on, it became a lot easier. Uh, repeating some of the steps that Martha uh, gave you a minute ago, I first trace my design on top of my linen and layer it with anywhere from two to four layers of salvi uh, behind it, depending on the thickness of your fabric. Place it in a hoop and then stitch around the design with a short straight stitch. The short straight stitch helps to keep the opening from stretching later on when the salvi is gone. On top of the straight stitch, do a zigzag. The zigzag will keep the fabric from pulling away from the stitching once you cut out the opening. Now then the fabric in the opening is cut away, leaving the salvi. And I like to use an applique scissors so that I can get close to the stitching without cutting the stitches. And you can see here, the neater that you are at this time, the neater your satin stitching will be later on when you finish. To do the satin stitching, I'm going to just begin by taking one stitch with a straight stitch and pulling up my bobbin thread. If you have a needle down button, go ahead and engage it. Take some tie on stitches, which are just short straight stitches. And then to do the bar, um, it's really pretty easy. If you will lift your needle out of your fabric, lift the foot, and then just drag it over. I call this a walk stitch because I'm not really sure what else to call it. <laughs> so I just take a walk stitch or drag it across and take the stitch beyond that zigzag stitching that I took earlier. So all you need is one stitch in the fabric and then lift your foot and go back again. You can do this really as many times as you want to. The more times you do it, the thicker the bar is going to be. When you're doing these stitches, remember to always stitch, put that uh, extra stitch beyond the stitches that you have created with the tiny zigzag stitch. Now after you have gone over the bars as many times as you want it to go over it, then you have to satin stitch it. The straight stitches really won't, wouldn't uh, hold very much as a bar. So then I turn my foot around and now I'm going to satin stitch with a zigzag. My zigzag needs to be wide enough to cover the, the uh, walk stitches that I placed over it. And also the satin stitches is only within the opening. It's not on the fabric right now. It's only on the salvi instead of the fabric. This is a satin stitch, so my satin stitch length is set and I'm wide enough to cover the walk stitches. And also a little secret is if you walk it an odd number of times and then satin stitch, you end up where you started. Oh, that's a good idea. Again, you want to stop before you get into the fabric. You would complete as many bars as necessary that uh, you have in your design. After you've completed all of the bars, then you can satin stitch around the design. With, when you do the satin stitch around your design, I usually make my width a little bit wider. It needs to be wide enough to cover up what I've already stitched, as well as the raw edges that uh, are here. So to do this, now I am going to readjust my position and satin stitch so that I'm going completely off of the fabric and into the salvi on the right and then onto the fabric covering up my previous stitching. And that's really all there is to cut work. It's really, like I said, a lot easier than when it was when I first learned how to do it with free motion in a darning foot. Well, Louise, that is absolutely fascinating. Now then, let me just ask you one more time. You did, you went across how many times on that, on the, um, I went off, went up, I always go across uh, anywhere from three to seven times, depending on how big your opening is 
and how fat your bar wants to be. Okay, and what was that little be. magic trick about the odd, about the when you use odd, numbers. odd numbers? Okay. Well, if you start on the left side and you go to the right, okay. when you go an odd number of times, One, you go completely, you know, across an odd number of times so that when you sat and stitch, you end up back where you began. Louise, thank you so very much. Thank you, Okay. Martha. You know what I'm going to do? Come on back over to the boards with me. And I'm going to show you our blouse of the series, which has a lovely cut work. And then I'd like to go over one more time the techniques, just to say it one more time to show you how easy cut work is. This lovely Australian blouse, again, this is our ladies' pattern in this particular series, has a beautiful cut work design. It all, you know what, if you look at this, it lo almost looks like a little clown face or something with two eyes and a nose and then a mouth and some teeth. Well, I'd like to take you over one more time exactly how easy it is to do this cut work. By the way, isn't that pretty with the gold thread on the white linen blouse? One more time, let me show you this interesting blouse with the raglan sleeves and the center panel. This is our blouse pattern of the series. Let's start at the very beginning this little face. First of all, the design is drawn on a piece of paper. Then I take, in this case, my handkerchief linen, put it down over the design and trace it off onto the handkerchief linen. That's step number one. Step number two, take a hoop. Now, my handkerchief linen is the top piece. There are two pieces of water-soluble stabilizer that are in behind the linen. That's absolutely necessary for cut work. So I put those three pieces into the hoop and move on to the next step, which is my first sewing step. All right, I'm going to straight stitch all around the outside design, all the way around it. Here, all the way around the little, uh, little teardrops of the little eyes and the little nose, and all the way around the outside of the design. I do not straight stitch over those little bars. Leave those unstitched. The next step involves a little, a little zigzag, not a satin stitch, just a, kind of an open zigzag, but a little bitty skinny one. Over all of those lines I straight stitched, let me take my hand around here, those lines that were straight stitched all the way around here, around the little teardrops, and the last place you would zigzag would be around this little piece right here. Once again, do not stitch over these little bars. Those will be the Richelieu bars and we'll make them a little bit later. Okay, you've straight stitched and you've zigzagged. Next step is to come in and trim away the fabric only. Now people, good friends, I did not trim away the water soluble stabilizer. I just trimmed the fabric only. Here are the little cheer drops. I do not trim away the water soluble stabilizer, only the linen pieces. Okay, I've pulled, I've trimmed those away. Moving on to the next step, since the teardrops do not have Richelieu bars in them, I'm ready to finish the teardrops. So I will go ahead and satin stitch all the way around my teardrops and whatever my final stitching will be, and those three teardrops will be finished. Now what I really have left to do now, I've got to get those Richelieu bars back in place. Do you see those little lines coming out on the side? That's where I'm going to know where the Richelieu bars will be. All right, I come back, come back in here and walk stitch. As Louise was telling you earlier, I stitch over and go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth an uneven number of times. That gives me my, the beginning of my Richelieu bar. Moving over to the next hoop, after I make a Richelieu bar, I go in and zigzag or satin stitch real tightly one time only over each one of those Richelieu bars, and that finishes up my Richelieu bars. Okay, I come in all the way around. I put it, see, I've got two more Richelieu bars to do right here. And then the final step on this beautiful cut work is to go back and satin stitch all the way around the outside edges that have not already been satin stitched. In other words, I'll have to come up around here and finish it. Now that is the step, and that's the, those are the steps rather. Absolutely nothing to it once you practice just a little bit. We have a beautiful quilt square for you next, which you might have guessed also has cut work.
I think you're going to love the quilt square we have for you today. This beautiful cut work square is done on the pink silk dupioni, and it has this beautiful dark uh, dusty rose uh, thread. Now I want you to see that this is four. You remember the little thing I showed you how to do a few minutes ago, the little clown face? This is four of those put together. One, two, three, four. I have a little trick to show you since you've already learned how to do cut work. If you have a piece of fabric that you're going to do the cut work on top of and you can't see through the fabric to draw your design on, simply put your, uh, draw your design on a piece of water soluble stabilizer. Put one on the front. Now you know you have to have water soluble stabilizer on the back also. But if you can't see through your fabric, simply trace it on a piece and put water soluble stabilizer on the front also. After that is finished, come back in, work on all the different pieces, and in the case of this quilt, we have a piece of white silk dupioni that is on the back to line it, so you can look th right through the pink on the front and see how pretty it is. Next, we have an adorable little doll dress, and guess what? She has a little bit of cut work on her dress also. A little doll has on the cutest little red, white, and blue patriotic, almost an I Love America dress. The most adorable techniques are on this doll dress. First of all, she has a cute little cut work collar done in handkerchief linen with the little teardrops and the little scallops or scallops around the edge. Look at this treatment on her little sleeve. If you'll just come over here with me. This is a sweet little band around her sleeve and a little bit of... Uh, tight satin stitch at the top and tight satin stitch at the bottom. That would be precious on a child's dress too. The little blousy antique dress and let's go all the way down to the skirt. This is absolutely precious. You've been wondering where to use those beautiful decorative stitches on today's fabulous modern sewing machines. Well, I have a really cute trick to show you and this happens to be one of the neatest hem treatments going. If you'll come over with me to the sewing machine, I'd like to refresh your memory one more time on actually the different steps of doing cut work. Okay, here we go. Step number one is to draw off the design. In this case, it's almost a little bolera on the doll dress on the handkerchief linen. Step number two, remember I have my water soluble stabilizer uh, behind this uh, bodice of the doll dress. Step number two is simply to straight stitch around the whole design that you have drawn. Step number three is to trim away the inside through the linen only. In other words, leave your water soluble stabilizer let me pull that one up and show you. Leave the stabilizer behind there. And the last step is, after you've trimmed away the inside, to go back and do your heavy zigzag, your heavy satin stitch all around the outside. Now, let's talk a little bit about that adorable hem that the doll has on her dress. This hem is precious, not only for the doll dress, but it's really cute for children's and women's clothes also. Quick, quick to do, and don't forget how much fun it is to truly utilize your wonderful sewing machines with all of those embroidery stitches and decorative stitches. Okay, here we go. Now then, first of all, the first step on the hem is simply to serge the back of the hem, then, of course, pin it up, and then go back and do a basting stitch, a straight stitch right along the hem. That will also be your guideline for the hem. And then I can set it on any one of the decorative stitches, guiding in the middle. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, anytime you're doing decorative stitches, go ahead and put a stabilizer behind. We have used a tear-off stabilizer. You really need it so it won't bunch up the fabric. And then it's just as simple as can be. Go ahead and stitch. A decorative stitch guiding right in the middle of your foot. So my decorative stitch is sort of maybe a zigzag. I mean, it goes over and back and over and back and over. And so I'm guiding right down the middle. And if, oh, it's just making the cutest little hem treatment. Don't forget, this is a great treatment for a child's dress or for a lady's dress. The only real key here is to remember to put your stabilizer behind there. And I really do prefer the tearaway stabilizer when I'm working on something like this, or even you could just use adding machine tape or a piece of uh, typing paper, except gosh knows it's not even typing paper anymore. We call it computer paper, don't we? Next, well, let me just pull this out and show you just a second. Here we go. See how pretty that little hem is? And that is the cutest way to hem a dress. Next, we have a really cute and very easy craft for you.
This little craft takes about a jiff and a half to make. The little cherry tree is purchased as a topiary tree, and as you can see, we've done a little trim on it, put a beautiful gold bow. Let me just show you how quickly it is to make this. The little purchase tree comes just like this. To use, to put some gold and some tinselly in it, just get a little bit of gold grass at your craft store, and we actually have a little bit of this gold grass. You pull it off and put it up in here. Now then, before you do all of that, if you would like to decorate the pot and make it darker, this is a sticky back fabric you can buy at your craft store. So you just cut it and put it around the base of the pot. After you do that, you use a round doily of Battenberg, pull it up all the way around the pot, and here's a little gold um, thread that you tie it with, tie a little bow, and then use your wider uh, bow. This is awfully pretty gold mesh all wired on the edge. Tie that up and then you have a cute little craft or a cute little gift to give to almost anybody that you want to give just to something a little bit special to. Next we have a beautiful pillow for you. This pillow is probably the easiest sewing project I've ever done. I think you'll like to make several yourself. Starting out with a purchased red cozy, you know, the kind with the four little points, it's simply pulled around and tied. Let me show you how this works. First of all, before I show you the bread cozy, I will share one trick. To make a pillow that does not lump when you put your stuffing in it, put a little piece of, of batting behind the pillow and it will be just smooth every time. Then on your purchased bread cozy, you simply sew a piece of ribbon on all four edges and then you lay your pillow down and you bring the edges over like this and you tie a pretty bow and that's the easiest pillow I've ever seen. Now, won't you come along with me up to my attic? I have something very special to share with you. I have the prettiest ladies dress to share with you today. It has even a little bit of cut work, believe it or not, on this turn of the century dress. Starting with this lovely neckline, a pretty pin tucks. You know, we see pin tucks all the time on antique dresses, but look at this beautiful embroidery right in the middle. Do you see a little design that looks a little bit like what we've been teaching today? I certainly do. Traveling on down this dress, well, you know what? I believe you can see it better if I just hold it up here for you. Look how beautifully the skirt is done with its section of pin tucks, and it has the um, embroidery design once again in the middle with the cut work, absolutely beautiful. And you know something, there is even a beautiful bottom of this skirt too. Oh my goodness, how much I love tucks. And I think the Victorians and the Edwardians love tucks as much as I do because they absolutely use them everywhere. Beautiful, beautiful dress. Look at that skirt, isn't that pretty? With this beautiful pin tucks, this little bit of cut work, pretty laces, and remember, the only kind of sewing machine they had was a straight stitch. I think they did a miraculous job. No telling what they would have given for our wonderful zigzag sewing machines today. For the Sewing from the Heart segment, I have a sweet story to tell you. There is a group of people in um, Huntsville that make these little felt stockings for the babies that are born at Huntsville Hospital to come home in all during the month of December. In other words, when mom and dad take their little baby home, as big as babies are today, some of them might have trouble fitting in this stocking. But do you see the little angel that is uh, on there? There's a group at Huntsville Hospital called the Angel Organization, and they have a little angel uh, glued on there, I might add, and they put the little bouncing baby in this red stocking and they put this little hat on the baby's head and mom and dad get to take their little Christmas present home in this absolutely adorable little stocking. That might be something you might want to check with your hospital. It's such a nice treat and this organization enjoys this kind of sewing for volunteer work. I thank you so much for being with us today. We've had a wonderful time sharing the tricks of cut work with you. I hope you think it's a whole lot easier than you did at the beginning of the show. Now, we appreciate your being with us today. We have a great show for you next time, and I certainly hope that you will be with us next time in my sewing room.